gonna be real quiet. Uh, I'm actually stalking a plant. Uh, you know, like carnivores, they uh, stalk their prey. Well, uh, vegetarians, they stalk plants because they eat them. All right, here we go. Oh no, we're too late. This one's been uh, severely damaged. Uh, you can tell by uh, right there, it's been snapped. It's okay, uh, we're gonna find it. We're gonna have to ro hit the road. Come on, let's go. We're just approaching some railroad tracks. <sighs> Safe to cross. All right, let's go. There we are, folks. We're in the vast, treacherous roads of Tennessee. You can see it behind me. Uh, we're literally probably just uh, a few hundred feet from the nearest civilization. And here's where we find the exclusive plant we've been looking for. Let's take a look. There it is, near the trenches, but not in the trenches. The dandelion. Dandelions, really? Well, yes. Uh, in the Bible, plants are used often to teach us things. Uh, let's take, for instance, uh, the parable uh, that Jesus taught about the mustard seed. That was a plant. And how about when Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches? Another plant. So how might, what, might we compare the Christian life with a plant. Hmm. hmm. So how does the Christian life compare to a plant? Well, let's see. They both need a source of life and they both should grow and definitely they both should produce fruit. So yeah, uh, our Christian life and a plant do compare. So speaking of plants, it reminded me of um, weeds. I was working in my backyard and we we're pulling out weeds and we pulled one out and it was connected to another one. Pretty soon we had a whole mess of weeds that were interconnected from underneath the ground in a network. And uh, it, it's kind of, you know, unflattering to think of the kingdom of heaven uh, comparing it to weeds, but it's surprising how many times uh, Jesus uses plants in his parables. Uh, for instance, John 15, 5, where it mentioned uh, that he is divine and we are the branches. If we remain in him and abide in him, uh, we will bear much fruit. And if you think about it, um, if our choice to stay with him, to abide with him, to connect with him, that makes God our source of life, kind of like plants. So today's lesson uh, has to do with walking with God. Where are we going with walking with God? And I want to lay out three points to remember. Uh, the first one is appreciate. Appreciate the role of spending time together, uh, not just with friends and family, but with God as a friend. Number two, learn or remember. Remember God's attempts to reunite with you or to stay with you uh, in your time of good times and bad times. And number three, commit. Commit to spending time with God every day. Let's look at scripture and what the Bible says about appreciation. Appreciation of our creator, God. Uh, let's look here at Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It reads, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. Wow. Being created in the image of the almighty God. That's a privilege in itself. Uh, but we know the story, and 
we know that he actually got down on his knees and touched the earth and molded Adam uh, with his bare hands. I mean, he, he took time. There was craftsmanship involved here when he was uh, creating Adam for the first time, a human being. And then he reached down and it says he blew the breath of life into his nostrils. So there was, there was some kind of um, deep connection here. I mean, the other animals, uh, they were cool too, but he just spoke spoke them into existence. You know, lion and giraffe and uh, so forth. But humans, uh-uh. He got down and he touched it and he molded the earth. And I don't know how he did it, but he put all the veins together and everything, cells. It was something to be appreciated. Uh, that's one way we can appreciate our Savior. And that's by reading scripture uh, and realizing uh, what was put into creating us. So number two, to learn or remember reminds me of the story of uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, one of the true heroes of the 20th, 20th century. Uh, if you don't know his story, you're going to learn it. And if you do know him, we're going to remember. So Nelson Mandela uh, was a lawyer, and he became involved in the struggle in his home country in South Africa. You see, there, were, there was a legal system there that forcibly and legally separated people by colors and race. And uh, Mandela's work in the African National Congress, his leadership uh, in the black community attracted attention of the white government at the time, uh, which wasn't too fond of his ideas of equality. Uh, inevitably, Mandela was arrested, and he served over 27 years uh, in prison with hard labor. And even though he was in prison, he still became an even more powerful leader and symbol of the struggle uh, between equality and the freedom of South Africa. And uh, look at the date here, 1880. Uh, that's when he began secret relations with the government uh, the so uh, of South Africa to, um, to release him from prison. Uh, this is not too long ago. And 1990 was the year that he was released from prison. I remember, I was a kid. I remember watching the news. Uh, I didn't know what was going on, but... I remember his face and I saw him being released from prison. Uh, and he was eventually elected the first black president of South Africa. The story of Nelson Mandela was not easy. In fact, I uh, can't imagine being in prison for 27 years. Um, he had highs, he had lows. And uh, he discovered a lot of things while being in prison, a lot of time to meditate and think about life. And he never stopped believing. There's a quote that I want to read to you. And this is what it reads. He said, but I can rest only for a moment. For with freedom comes responsibility. And I want you to think about that. Uh, he was... Uh, seeking freedom from the authorities of the then then time. Uh, we as Christians, we're seeking freedom of sin, uh, that's hold it has on us. Uh, it, it chokes us every day. And so our freedom is something similar like Nelson Mandela's, uh, except it's in our minds and in our hearts. Uh, we need freedom, and that freedom we know only comes from Christ. So as we remember the story of Nelson Mandela, um, a hero of this earth, we have a hero in our lives, in our corner, and his name is Jesus. 
he really suffered uh, immensely to give us freedom. Commit. Commit to every day spending time with God. Connect with Him in some way. Uh, and our greatest inspiration uh, from commitment actually comes from uh, Jesus himself. Uh, he invites us, John 15, 5, says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me, there's your commitment, remain in him, and I in them. We will produce fruit. Uh, that's his promise. Commitment is something that you have to actively take part in. So young people, let's remember to appreciate, appreciate what God has done for you. Look at this beautiful earth that he's created. Appreciate the love of God, the creation he has done for all of us to behold. Remember this guy? Yeah, the dandelion. We can learn from it. Look at the roots, the root system, the network, the deep roots that it puts down into the earth. Remember, to keep rooted in Christ, in the Word of God. And finally, commit. Remember this from Matthew 13? Uh, Jesus talked about the mustard seed. This huge tree was once a tiny seed, but it stood firm. And with help of the Lord, it grew and became this giant tree, just like we can if we're deeply rooted and committed to Christ. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the opportunity to study your word. And Father, Help us to always appreciate what you have done for us. To remember how you have guided us in the past. And Father, especially for these young people, help them to commit to your ways, to your teachings, so that when you come back, oh, we will be ready. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone.